What's going on, SMS Show? That's right. I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Lawrence Sterling. How you doing, man? Outstanding. Excellent. So, we've got a very special episode today. We're going to talk about a little bit about the injustice that's, that's going on all across America. And um, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. we got some special things to talk about. So, what is really going on nowadays? We've got issues where people of color all across America, like Sandra Bland, Eric Gardner. Who else? Freddie Gray. You got Trayvon. Right? For no reason she got put over for no reason and she you know she she wasn't having it that day. Wasn't heavy traffic. Uh right. you know, he pulled up right behind her. Uh you know, like she said, man, I'm just trying to let you over. He Pretty asked much. her, he asked her is something wrong. And I I watched the whole tape of when he pulled her over. There was yeah. about ten minutes where he went to his car, 10, 11 minutes, I don't know the time exactly. But just saying, if you got something to do and you're waiting for this cop who pulled you over, you know, for 10, 11 minutes, you're waiting for him to run your ID and for everything. For yeah, history. for yeah, getting yeah. over you, trying to get out of his way, you'd be a little agitated too. But it know? seems like, it seems like, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like in 2015, we were kind of over kind of like racial tension. But now all of a sudden, over the last few years, we've, we've heard and we've seen over the TV, over the social media, serious injustice where people have been killed mm. and been treated very negatively. Yeah, racism has grown. It's you know, the under the cloak of different things. You know, it's smile in your face in California these days. I'll, you know, you really have to, you know, catch that smile. You know, you got racists who are, you know, friendly to you. And that kind of throws you off, too. I'd much rather deal with uh, the ones who are outright mm. and let you know what they think, you know. Word. Because it'll, it'll catch you off guard. And, you know, I, I hit on some things that we'll get into later. So let's, let's get right into that. I mean, we're here, we're here to actually talk about a book that you wrote titled Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack. And I believe the book talks about some of the injustice that you've encountered with uh, law enforcement, correct? Law enforcement, uh, I'll say this first, it's just a story. A story that I thought was interesting. Is it a true story? True story, nonfiction, and you know what they say, if it's the truth, it'll it'll find its audience. And Absolutely. slowly but surely, you know, I've been getting support from all over, you know, and I met meeting new people, and you know, that brought me and you together. Yeah, right? that's that, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I appreciate you coming by. All right. So it's titled Cracker Jack. Um, tell me why why is it called Cracker Jack? I feel like this this actually might set some people off. People might be a little, they might feel like this is kind of like racial. What? Yeah. Why? Why Cracker Jack? Nothing derogatory. Actually, I was sitting eating a, a, some Cracker Jacks, and I noticed on the front that me and the sailor had something in common. Our uniforms are nicknamed Cracker Jacks. So really? It's nothing derogatory. It's just wordplay off of my Navy, my Navy uniforms. Oh, so you were actually in the Navy? Actually in the Navy, served five years. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a picture. There's a yeah, picture of you right yeah, there in the Navy. Look at Sharp, guy. Look at Sharp. I like right it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, so this, this, this is interesting to me. I mean, so you were, you actually served for our country, but you've actually had a run-in with, with it looks like the Hayward Police. Right. Why don't you go ahead and get into that? Tell, tell us what happened that you had to write a book about it. You think that racism is gone, but it's actually right in your face. And just this night, um, you know, they picked the wrong person to to do it to. I felt that with all my resources, education, and everything, you know, I'd get my story out. And, so, so uh, what exactly happens? Were, were you in Hayward when you got I pulled over? Or what, what happened? What I exactly was, happened? Take us to that night. Take us, take us to that night. I was, I was leaving Oakland from my parents' home. I was coming to Hayward. Um, left my wallet. So, um, getting off of the freeway, they pulled me over. You know, about a mile, the, the police officer tell me it was two of them. Uh, get a hundred feet to where I from where I stay. So they, they pulled you over. Were you on the freeway or in a residential area? A residential area. Okay, they, so they tell me from the freeway all the way home for for about a mile and a half. 
um, says I didn't use my blinker, but I actually came to a stoplight. I see him behind me. You know, when the police are behind you, you're going to obey all traffic laws. You're going to make sure your seatbelt's on. You know, you're not going to be speeding. I did all this. So I see him behind me. I put my blinker on just for him. Mm. He pulls me over. Right. You know, and instead of going into the cul-de-sac where I was living, I pulled into the well-lit liquor store right across the street, you know, where they could see me and everything. Right, right. So they went through their procedures. Things escalated. And a dog <laughs> was called onto the scene. Oh, so, so, so the two cops pulled you over. And there wasn't a dog with those two cops, but they had those two cops called reinforcements. Called reinforcements. Okay. You know, and uh, you know, at the same time, there's six, seven squad cars coming. There's, you know, cars coming from. And you're by yourself the whole I'm time. By myself, uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been a helicopter there. I thought there was a case of mistaken identity. I'm from, you know, I served in the military. I was getting ready to explain to them. You know, if there was a case of mistaken identity, I'm not your man. You know, right? And I, and I right. Stayed, you, so, did you actually go into this situation kind of very calm and collective? Yeah, very calm, and collective. Um, you know, staying right across the street. You know, I was a bit surprised and shocked by all of the force that was coming. But once they got there, like I said, I was ready to explain to them that, hey, hey, guys, I stay across the street here. Right, you know, right. Uh, you know, if there's anything I can do to, you know, assist you guys, let me know. Right. <laughs> but, you know, while I'm thinking that, uh, uh, man, the thing looked like a werewolf. But it was a canine <laughs> brushed up against me and now I see the dog and it's wagging its tail and it's in front of who now I know to be Officer Cox. Oh. He was the police officer who responded with the canine. And I later read in the police report that he has a little clicker, a little release on his belt that when wow. he hits it, opens the ca you know, the canine door. The canine is supposed to come to whoever is the most aggressive. Well, I'm standing there dazed and confused, like, you know, what, what the heck's going on? You know, the dog's wagging his tail. He don't know what's going on. There's a plainclothes cop standing next to me. When he gave the dog the command to attack, he actually went up to the plain clothes cop. Huh. But then he redirected the dog to my leg and got the chewing on it. They tackled me. Cox and the Hendrix, the cop who pulled me over with the plain clothes cop, you know, tackled me to the ground and you know, rolling on to the ground. So, so the cop tackled you to the ground. Both cops tackled me to the ground. But why? Bumped what was heads. your justification for tackling you to the ground? You, you got to ask them and see that that that's the thing where I get into the you know into the book. I put out their police report. There's a police report in the book. There's a p actual police report, word for word, in the book. And so it's for everybody to see oh, that's just right. the yeah. kind of tactics they use to entrap us. You know, now I'm saying, you know, there's photographs in there. I don't want to give too much away. I actually got a picture. Has it, you got, you have a picture of you getting bit? Yeah. Like, has any, has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> like, has this ever happened oh, to whoa, you? Oh, whoa, whoa, there's pictures of you yeah. being bit by the dog. Has, has that ever happened to oh, you? Oh, man. Need to has, talk. has that ever happened to has you? Has that ever happened? A lot of interesting things going on in America today. I mean, we are one of the most free nations in, in the world, but it seems like we're still very much suppressed. So I want to encourage you guys to go ahead and post your comments below. Let us know what you think. Have you ever experienced any type of injustice? Um, what do you think needs to happen um, to prevent things like this? I mean, heck, if you're a police officer watching this even, you know, maybe you can kind of get some insight uh, to real people that are yeah. out here, that good people that are out here that, that don't mean any harm. You also have a website for the book, right? Crackerjacked.com. And you got a Facebook page too, right? If you're Facebook, on Facebook, Lawrence Sterling 3. Crackerjack. Crackerjack.com. Right? right. Excellent. And on a higher note, I mean, kind of like on the same, kind of, you know, same topic. I think the, the new movie Compton is coming out, right? Oh, man. I've been waiting since February when I saw the preview. Right? You know, to go see Easy that. E? Yeah, I think yeah. Easy E had a hard time with the police, right? Man. He had a hard time with the police because they were trying to speak their mind. P. Newton. The uh, you know, all them, a lot of people done had problems with the police dating back. It just didn't start with NWA. But and they it were just the so first, happens to be people the first to document it, though. 
you know, in rap, you know, hip hop, rap, tell them what's going on in the, in their neighborhoods. I mean, I, I was raised on NWA. You know. That's what's up. <laughs> so Compton, I think coming out this weekend, coming out in August. That's right. So uh, go ahead and check that out. Leave your comments. Let us know what you think. And uh, lastly, I want to thank you, Lauren Sterling, for coming by. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Go get the book, Cracker Jack. We'll catch you in a minute. Next episode. Peace. Peace.